Welcome again to Highly Questionable. What's got you most excited on the show today, Bo? Weed. All right. Weed it is. Vamos, papi. Is Chip Kelly the right choice for the 49ers? Looky here. The 49ers appear to want to hire Hugh Jackson really badly, but he chose to take the Cleveland job, which really has to be humbling if you're San Francisco. But hey, you get the guy that was just a genius two years ago when you get Chip Kelly. Here's what's most interesting about this. We can talk about scheme and everything else. Chip Kelly is the guy who wants his kind of guys on the team. We know about the questions people had about how he dealt with his players in Philadelphia. John Middlecoff, who does the radio in San Francisco, made a great point. There are a whole lot of guys on the 49ers that Chip Kelly didn't even have on his draft board. Why? Because Trent Baalke only cares if you can play. Let's see how this locker room deals with that genius. This is easy to question. I think most people look at it and say this is kind of a weird fit. San Francisco couldn't get along with Jim Harbaugh. Now you've got a coach who couldn't get along with management in Philadelphia and got his head cut off in the street after game 15 because they didn't even want him to the end of the season. However, I would say this on behalf of this marriage, if you care to be optimistic, people do learn from their mistakes. Chip Kelly just learned how his stubbornness cost him in Philadelphia. San Francisco just learned with Tom Sewell and everyone quitting the mistakes they made from Harbaugh. Maybe both sides can be improved and find some sort of middle ground. Yeah, that's presuming a whole lot of learning took place in like a month. Colin Kaepernick is saying, I'm back, baby. I'm yes. back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm he back. is saying that. That's what Colin Kaepernick is saying. Trent Baalke is saying, no, you're not. <laughs> Is Ben McAdoo the best man for the Giants job? McAdoo. I don't think there's an N in there, although there might be some L's in his future. Here's what we've got, though, because he's pretty good at what he does in terms of helping quarterbacks. And it feels like we've gotten a climate shift in that sport where it's not about changing your culture or discipline or leadership. It's can you do what Bruce Arians has done in Arizona? The last few coaches hired. Gaze got hired because he limited Cutler's interceptions. Hugh Jackson just got hired because he made Dalton better. This guy is said to make quarterbacks better. He's already made Eli Manning better. That's why he got the job. Yeah, but how much better did he actually make Eli Manning? Because the big thing that jumps out to us is the touchdowns and the lack of interceptions. But go look game by game. When they played against good defenses, Eli Manning looked a whole lot like the Eli Manning that we had seen before. Like, Magadou is not going to be able to turn him into somebody else. My question is, if you're the Giants, are you effectively telling us that the whole problem that you had was Tom Coughlin? Because it sounds like you're going to keep your defensive coordinator. You promoted your offensive coordinator. Jerry Reese kept his job. Like, you seem to think that the cancer that was harming you is the guy that you told me was so great in every way just last week. Is this the guy who played for the Lakers? No, no, no. That's his, <laughs> un that's his uncle. Oh, this that's is, this uncle. is his nephew. Right, right. <laughs> I wasn't sure whether he was white or black until I saw the photos. So they're related, right? Like every bag of do I'd ever heard of before this played some variety of sport and was black. Should the NFL focus more on stopping players for using legal synthetic marijuana than real marijuana? Focus. 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 F -O Focus. That's, that's not helping. Yeah. But, all right, so we got this situation here. Chandler Jones, as you know, showed up to a police station, got on his knees hoping not to get shot because he was so high that the only place he could think to go was a police station. Well, it appears that he was using synthetic marijuana. That's what the reports have been. And it does seem kind of interesting that the NFL has a pretty strong prohibition against actual marijuana. Josh Gordon missed this whole season because of marijuana. Have you ever heard of anybody doing anything like this because they were using marijuana? Now, you can make the argument that synthetic marijuana is legal in a lot of these places, but you have to admit, this seems to be just a bit counterintuitive when people are trying to beat your drug test by using something that's a little bit more dangerous. It does make me wonder any time now that we get a weird story of guy with the bears who's making all sorts of weird threats to management when he gets cut, or Robert Kim DJ is jumping from the second floor of a building through a plate glass window, or this, where the behavior is so weird that you realize we're in a place where synthetic marijuana is not against the rules of the sport. Synthetic marijuana, you've arrived in a place where you're incentivizing guys to use this, which seems more harmful than the other stuff, which isn't harmful. And the next thing you know, you've got a story on your hands where a guy thinks he's being chased by dragons or a mummy covered in spiders because he's smoking this stuff instead of the stuff you won't allow. Only the real stuff for me. That's it. I don't believe in imitations. Right. No, no, imitations no. are no good for me. <laughs> no synthetics for Poppy. He's all organic.
Are you willing to blame Steph Curry for costing the Warriors a win last night? Somebody on this set predicted that the Nuggets would beat the Warriors last night. I bet you can't guess who it was who predicted correctly who would beat the Warriors last uh, night. Oh, the good old broken clock. And look at Steph Curry at the end of this game. The game is close. It probably bears noting that Draymond Green did not play. And there's the turnover you can't have in that situation. Danilo. Is that Danilo? It is Danilo. Danilo makes the steal, and I would blame it on Draymond Green not playing. They're one and two in games when either Green or Curry doesn't play. They've only lost one other times when everyone plays. By the way, we just asked that question about a game in which Stephen Curry had 38 points and 20 of them in the fourth quarter. Hey, no matter how good your team is, there's going to be a game or two through the year that you lose that you really have no business losing. The Bulls in 96, they lost one to the Nuggets, and the Nuggets won 18 games that year. They lost one to the Raptors. It's no coincidence the Warriors have this loss against the Nuggets because altitude provides one of the greatest home court advantages in basketball. You go play a mile high, it's not always that easy to win, no matter how sorry the Nuggets are. Well, I told you last night that the uh, Nuggets were going to beat the Warriors, and they did. And tonight, tonight is a turn for the Lakers. They're going to beat the Warriors no, tonight. come on, Poppy. Come on. Come <laughs> on. You're a crazy old man. You don't believe this. That's stuff right. You got no, Swaggy P. No. You got Kobe. No. You got the whole ball of wax come on. there. Right? I, 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 I thought you were going to give us reasons why they'll win. You mentioned Kobe. Would you be surprised if the power forward was a whole ball of wax? <laughs> Let's not forget Marcelo Huertas now. <laughs> ah, yes. The last time you brought him up, he put up a goose egg. I don't even believe that. I know you don't. I know you don't. Magic just, Johnson wouldn't believe that. He's just saying it for ratings. Did Russell Westbrook really deserve to get ejected for his scuffles with J.J. Barrea and the Mavs? Uh, all of the Mavs, he was fighting. Villanueva, he's still in the league. He put a hand on Russell Westbrook's throat. Let's look at some of this last night. He scored zero points in 15 minutes. That's where it starts. Barrea exists to do that. And... Here comes Villanueva. He's always the guy to show. He is Mr. Third Man. He, even if he's not in the league or on your team, he'll show up and put a hand on your throat. Coming out of the tunnel with a credential around his neck. And then later, uh, that's the first one. And then later in the game, this happens. And this is what results in the second technical foul. And this is what results in the ejection. And that's the refs just trying to get control of those two guys. Oh, that's a whack call. That was weak, right? Gone. Oh, that's so weak. Good look at J.J. Barea. How much, like, how much more little man can you go than clapping for that? You knew that was weak. I mean, Barea's feeling pretty good about himself, right? He exists to make that happen. Well, you also have to remember this about J.J. Barea. There is no more fighting sort of demographic in professional sports than 5'9". Like 5'11 and below. All the fighting they had to do to get to where they are, they're always ready to mix it up because mixing it up is what's gotten them this far in life. My favorite part from all of that was the post-game interview with Westbrook where the reporters are asking him questions about Berea, asking him questions about Berea being an irritant, and Westbrook stays on script. He is not answering your questions. He's not here for that. He's answering questions about the game, questions you're not asking. Do you think that was something that they were trying to do was to try to kind of get under you guys' skin and take you out of it since they were so short-handed? Uh, I mean, I just thought we did a great job of playing together. Um, guys did a great job, Dion, uh, Kevin. Guys came up with the bench, made some big plays, uh, played well. Is that part of Berea's game to try to be an irritant? Uh, I mean, I just think uh, together overall, uh, played a good game. I thought um, a good energy. Defensively did well. Uh, forced some turnovers, got out in transition. How do you think? I, down some, I wasn't done. Got out in transition, <laughs> made some threes. I think we tied our season high tonight, 15, so it was good for us. I am not finished dismissing your question as being totally irrelevant. By the way, eight years into the league, Russell Westbrook still trying to make that beer connect. That was a hell of a job by Barrea. He got to do that in every game, you know, to get the other point guard ejected. You know, that's the way you win games, you know. I'm telling you, you can see Q1 is, is pulling the strings there, you know. Uh, that might be the way that's for the right. Mavs to I'm win the championship you. this year. If in every game the Mavs are playing, Berea is getting the other best player kicked out. Not a bad plan, not terrible. Coming up next on my son Stevie show, we talk to Joe Tysman. Wilt had a little tiny guy he used to play racquetball with, and the little guy he was with was running all over the place, and if the guy missed a shot, Wilt would just berate him. How could you possibly do that? Can you believe that? And Wilt never moved. 
He stood there like a just nationwide 4G LTE on the T-Mobile network, thirty dollars. Period. Joining us at the beach today is Joey Tisman. Joe Tisman, former Washington quarterback and great. He's promoting the Hallmark Channel's original movie, Love on the Sidelines, which premieres Saturday, January 16th at 9 p.m. Let's talk to Joe. Wow, he had love in his voice. Love. Joe, can you tell us the story of you recruiting Andre the Giant to go play for your team? <laughs> like, I need to know the backstory of how it is that you involved, uh, you found yourself in Andre the Giant's arms. Well, you know, George Allen was always a creative individual when it came to promoting the Washington Redskins. And what he basically did was is he wanted me to go to New York to spend some time with Andre the Giant in a publicity move to see if we could get Andre to come in and be a designated field goal and extra point blocker. His hair was big enough, I think it could have done it by itself. But when he picks me up and puts me in his arms, I had no idea that this man was as big as he was, and his hand size is bigger than anything I've ever seen in my life. He picked me up like an infant. It was just amazing how big, how massive a man he was. Well, how did it feel being in Andre the Giant's arms? Was it comfortable? I mean, like I imagine for an infant, it would be very comfortable wrestling with Andre it, it the Giant. Was, it was comfortable, but I just hoped that he wasn't going to put me down and thought it was a wrestling. He had a flashback to a wrestling moment mm -hmm. when he was going to put me down in a way I didn't want to be put down. And I've been hit by a lot of big people in my business, but I'll, I've never seen anything this big. I've never seen any human being this big. I've had a chance <laughs> to play racquetball with Will Chamberlain. I've been, you know, walk a beach with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Very big, big. Been around Shaq when he first came uh, at LSU. But nobody even comes close to the massiveness of Andre the Giant. I think I want some more of these stories. Tell me a little <laughs> more about playing racquetball with Will Chamberlain. Where was the after party? Well, there was, actually, there wasn't one, fortunately. I actually used to live out here in L.A., and so uh, was at the, uh, one of the courts out here one day when I was playing racquetball, and Wilt had a little tiny guy he used to play racquetball with, and so my partner and I got in there, and we're whacking it around, and Wilt never moved. Wilt stood right in the middle of the court, and you can't hit a, a ceiling shot because he, he just reaches up, and, and that's it. I mean, it was, you just couldn't get around him. And the little guy he was with was running all over the place, and if the guy missed a shot, Wilt would just berate him. How could you possibly do that? Can you believe that? And Wilt never moved. He stood there like a giant tree in the middle of the court. You've mentioned before that as a, as a kid or as in your early years playing, you were very cocky. You were too cocky. Can you remember the moment when that stopped or where it is that you got humbled along the way and you realized that that wasn't the way to be? November 18th, 1985. <laughs> ah, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> How about 10.05 p.m.? It was a humbling yeah. moment. Actually, it was after, after my injury. Um, I really, I had gotten caught up in myself. I had enjoyed tremendous success as a part of the Washington Redskins, from an MVP to a world championship uh, opportunity, you know, to one of the highest paid players in the league. I had all those things going for me material, in a material world. And I really got caught up in the world that I thought I was pretty special. I, the world revolved around me. It's part of walking around and hoping that people recognize you. And then after I got hurt and I went back in uh, to the Redskin Park, I went to my locker and sitting in my locker was Steve, Bar uh, Steve Bartkowski. And all my stuff, my, the chin strap that I'd cut my chin with, pictures of the families, mementos that fans had given me, all those things that make your world. It's like your office. Anybody out there, listen, if you have an office, you have all those things that are a part of your life. Everything that I had that was a part of my life that was in that locker was in a box in the equipment room waiting for me to pick it up. I had been replaced in a heartbeat. And, and all those years, all those 12 years had been really wiped out and placed in a box. And, and yet, if you don't really appreciate it, and I, I started to not appreciate it, uh, when it goes away, it's like, wow, what did I let go? At that time in my life, I probably would not have looked at myself and said, what are you doing? I would have basically said, you know, I earned this. I'm entitled to this. You know, I want to, I want to go, I want to, hey, I'm in a restaurant. What do you mean I don't have a table? What do you mean you don't have a table ready? How long will it take for me to wait? Be patient. Wait for a table like everybody else. Get in line at a movies. Don't go in the back door of a movie where people used to just say, hey, don't worry about staying in line. Come on, go around the back way. Go get a seat what you need. And, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, I'm not happy or nor proud of what I was and the way I tried to, to treat people, the way I lived my life. But I would not be where I am today had I not gone through those experiences to understand that that's not the way it should be. Life shouldn't be that way. 
Thank you, Joe. Gracias, Thank you, Joe. sir. Thanks, guys. Take care. Right, nice too. talking to you. Broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. Had this bad chick uptown. She was Whoa. Whoa. had me messed up in the head. I mean, Whoa. but the chick diamonds and pearls. I mean, Whoa. she has seen them things shining on her wrist. Whoa. Now money and a problem. See my dough is like Whoa. pull out my bankroll on you old people like Whoa. flows the blue stream from two tenths like Whoa. money want to pay my blueprints. I'm like. Whoa. My son's TV show is brought to you by Norwegian Cruise Lines. Feel free. Do you question if this is good defense? All right, we're going back to Warriors Nuggets, and apparently the Nuggets have a guy on the team named Jokic. That's what the producer just told me. I never heard of him before now. Jokic is playing defense on Bogut here. Nikolai is his first. Oh, that is good defense. Oh, that was, is excellent defense. By was it Nicolay. good defense or a bad pass? <laughs> like, I mean, it, it, with Bogan, I can't be so sure that that was an accident. Like, who are you throwing the ball to and why in that moment? I can't tell if that was being malicious or just flagrantly disrespectful. Let me see that again. Let's see if we can find where this pass is headed. Let's see if there is a cutter. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, there's a yeah. cutter. That, I mean, what a bad <laughs> aiming job you did there, Andrew Bogan. <laughs> you know, the Nuggets. They only won by two, so that was a defensive play of the game right there. You saw it with your own eyes. The the Warriors got the ball back, like right after. <laughs> yeah, they might have scored on that possession, and we didn't see it with our own eyes. That guy saw it more with his eyes than he would have liked to. He saw it with the bridge of his nose, if we're going to be accurate. Do you question which of these reporters displayed the most journalistic medal? All right, we're going to give you like a side-by-side, -side, tail of the tape sort of situation or something like that. We're going to start with the Thunder and the Mavericks. What happened with the reporter there? Well, one thing the Thunder learned on the road is that they have to sure up some things on defense. That begins at the three-point line, where Portland in particular took advantage. She kept on going, though. Wow, slow motion sounds kind of demonic there. The second clip, somebody finally asked Bill Belichick about that black eye. That's interesting. What happened with that black eye? Coach, how's your eye feeling? <laughs> How did you hurt it? Great. <laughs> I mean, how do you think you're just going to walk around with a black eye and nobody's going to ask you any questions about it? There's no place you can go where anybody knows you where you're just going to walk in with a black eye and nobody has any questions. We might need to call the police. Like We don't know what the situation is. We're just trying to help. What happened to your eye, man? <laughs> How's your eye? Great. He really stonewalled her. He is great at being interrogated. <laughs> Time to play the game that likes to rub it all over. See? Oh, no. <laughs> tell us what's on television tonight. We'll tell you if we're intrigued or not. On TNT, Cavs and Spurs. Oh, this is going to be fun. The Spurs, by the way, I think have a better point differential than the Warriors. I think they're beating people worse than the Warriors on average are beating people. We break down this game the only way we would break down this game. Let's go out to Boris Diaw's locker and snoop around in it. And in his locker, of course, calories, an espresso machine. Plugged into what? That's an excellent question. I would have assumed that what he was consuming would have been larger than that and more caloric. Not uh, not quite that small. Bomani, are you intrigued? I am intrigued. By the way, shout out to the NBA who basically is waiting for the football to go away before they give us good games. Cavs, Spurs, Warriors have only played against each other one time. That was on Christmas. The schedule is about to pick up a lot. Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued because I'm telling you now, you know, the only the only loss that the Spurs they have had uh, goes back to March of last year when they lost against the Cavaliers, and they're ready for that game. They're ready to get even now. I expect a big win from the Spurs tonight. It's true. They haven't lost at home since the Cavs beat them there. Poppy has spoken. Yeah, expect a big game from the Spurs, or Tim Duncan sits out with the gout. On NBC Sports Network, Blackhawks and Canadians. Oh, a couple of the original franchises going out. The most historic franchises playing each other. We break this down in exclusive, highly questionable style by watching Corey Crawford, the goalie for the Blackhawks, dancing. 
Take it. I didn't realize it was going to be him as a kid. I was that seems uh, small. I was told it was Corey Crawford, and I was fooled by the producers of this show. That is a tiny, shrunken Corey Crawford. Wow. He ain't bad, considering all the equipment and stuff. How, uh, how do the people that uh, chose a mus musical career and were hired by ESPN to put this non-rights-affiliated music on the show feel about this happening to their career? Bamani, are you intrigued? Not even the littlest bit. However, since we don't talk about hockey that much on this show, we have to now go back briefly to a photograph before the Winter Classic. This is what P.K. Subban wears, and he designed the damn thing himself. They really only made one dude like this. Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued because even though the Canadians, they have been going south, you know, in the last 17 games, they have 4 and 13, you know, they are up for that, for that uh, game tonight, so I'm going to give them a pe pep talk in French. Parlez vous français, monsieur? Don't really like that. Really Très bien. All right, great. You got it, you got it. Play hard, you know. You got to travel. You know, you got You got You got to You got to score goals, and you got to You got to hang in there tough. <laughs> okay, that stopped being French, and it turned into something. Merci, else. merci, right, merci beaucoup, right, bonjour, bonjour, monsieur. Right. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. Back tomorrow at the same time. Thank you for watching. Gracias. See you mañana. You know, I'm going to try the pep talk with the Canadian team one more time. Oh, oh great. Can't oh, wait. Oh, monsieur. Parlez-vous français. Très bien. Beaucoup. You got to do the best you can, monsieur. <laughs> <laughs> you All right. We're going to play the game to win. You play the game to win, monsieur. Oh, yeah, Travel français. Bye now bye, they're monsieur. Now they're ready to run through a wall. He's like the French Herm Edwards. Like if Herm Edwards was from Louisiana. Canadian's going to look. I do. I do. <laughs>